In the first four videos in this series, I focused on contour lines, which are all about vertical distance. Today, I'll add horizontal distance, and I'll show you how to combine the two to calculate slopes. As always, my goal is to provide a few basic concepts that will help you solve problems you'll face as a hiker. Let's start by supposing that on your map, two places are three inches apart. How far do you need to hike in the real world to get from one place to the next? Most paper topo maps include a statement of scale, which is the ratio of distances on your map to distances in the real world. Back when all maps were paper maps, the most detailed topo maps issued by the U.S. government were usually at a scale of 1 to 24,000. This map is telling you that one inch on the map is 24,000 inches in the real world. The same ratio applies to centimeters, or even cubits. The scale of a paper map is independent of the unit of measurement you use. I'm bringing up statements of scale so I can warn you to avoid using them. On this map, two waypoints that are 3 inches apart are 24,000 times 3 inches apart in the real world, divided by 12 for feet, or 36 for yards, divided by either 5280 or 1760 for miles. Maybe you can do that math in your head without making a mistake, but I can't. Also, the scale statement is true for the original map, but not necessarily for a copy. If you're using a reduced or enlarged version of the map, the original scale statement is no longer true. That's because the ratio of map distances to real-world distances changes when you resize a map. Instead, use a bar scale to estimate distance. Bar scales are almost idiot-proof, but not quite, because on most bar scales, the zero isn't at one end. Here the arrow indicates the zero mark for kilometers. Cartographers put the zero in an odd place because that's how they did it generations ago, but it was a bad idea then too. If you ask me, the zero should always be at the left end of the bar scale, just like on a ruler. But as long as you keep an eye out for this problem, it's easy to avoid. Here's an easy way to use the bar scale. Let's say you're at the intersection of trails 170 and 190 in the Manzano Mountains in the left half of this photo, and you want to know the distance to the intersection of trails 170 and 80. The easy way is to take a scrap of paper and mark the distance on the map, like I've done here. If you don't have a scrap of paper handy, you can even break off a twig or a stalk of grass to the right distance. Place your distance measurement next to the bar scale with one end at the zero point. In the real world, the marked distance is about 4,900 feet. A mile is 5,280 feet, so the straight line distance between the two trail intersections is just under one mile. Add in something for the twists in the trail you're on, and you know you have about a mile to go. If you can't remember how to convert between feet and yards and miles, or between the English and metric systems, you can always keep that information on a piece of paper in your pack. For the actual conversions, you can use the calculator on your smartphone. Let's look at a different part of the same map. Suppose you're standing at the trail intersection marked by the red arrow. Your plan is to hike to the spring marked by the second red arrow near my thumb. If you use the trick I just taught you to estimate the distance, the major zigzags in the trail will throw off your estimate. Here's how to get around that. I'll lay my scrap of paper next to the first more or less straight segment of the trail. I'll use one corner of the scrap of paper plus an arrow to indicate the distance on the map. Now I'll lay the scrap of paper along the next leg of the trail and add to my measurement along the scrap of paper. Now I'll move the scrap of paper so it's next to the last leg of the route to the spring, and I'll add that distance to the scrap of paper. I'll lay my scrap of paper next to the bar scale with the starting corner at the zero on the scale. Unfortunately, when I do this, my third arrow is past the end of the bar scale. To fix that, I'll slide the scrap of paper so the starting corner is at the left end of the bar scale instead of at the zero. That means I need to add 1,000 feet to the measurement, so my final measurement is about 6,500 feet. That's a mile and a quarter. Add something for the smaller zigzags in the trail, and it's roughly a mile and a half from the trail intersection to the spring. In a previous video, I claimed that the slope indicated by this arrow has more than a 20% grade. You now have the tools to check my calculation. The horizontal distance between the two index contour lines indicated by the arrow is 1,900 feet. From the index contour lines, you know that the vertical distance is 400 feet. 
400 divided by 1900 is 0 0.21 or 21 percent. You don't always need to know the grade of a slope that precisely, but when you do it's easy enough to figure out using the calculator on your smartphone. This may not seem like useful information, but in mountain terrain it is. Let's go back to this map segment and assume that you're at the spring shown near my thumb. Your goal is to hike to the trail intersection. Previously we calculated the horizontal distance as roughly a mile and a half, or 7,920 feet. Now let's calculate the vertical distance. For this video, as for others in the video series, you may need to be on a computer instead of a phone to see the details properly. Based on the previous video, you know how to figure out contour intervals by looking at index contour lines. Applying that knowledge, the contour interval on this map is 40 feet. The spring is about two and a half contour lines down from the 7200 foot index contour line. The elevation value for that contour line is indicated by the blue arrow. Two and a half times 40 is 100, so the spring elevation is 7200 minus 100, or 7100 feet. Here, the blue arrow marks the elevation value for the 8200 foot index contour line. The trail intersection is less than one contour line above that index contour line, so 8200 feet is close enough. In other words, between the spring and the trail intersection, the trail rises 1,100 feet. 1,100 divided by 7,920 equals an average grade of 14%. By way of comparison, the South Kaibab Trail in the Grand Canyon has an average grade of 13%. Even though this section of trail is short, it's definitely not for everyone. As people quickly find out when they start hiking, the grade of a trail is as much of a challenge as the horizontal distance. Before winding up this video, I want to tell you about a cheat for estimating distance. It doesn't work in the entire U.S., but where it does, it's very easy to use. As the U.S. expanded westward, the federal government created the Public Land Survey System, or PLSS, to subdivide and sell or give away land. The landscape got divided into six by six mile pieces called townships. Townships are divided into 36 numbered pieces, each one mile by one mile, called sections. The red arrows indicate the corners of a 6x6 six six mile township in New Mexico, and you can see how it's divided into 36 1x1 one one mile sections. In the next video, I'll explain what the colors mean. Here's section 24 of a township somewhere in New Mexico. The red arrows indicate the corners, and the section number is in the middle. When you see the red square for a section, each edge of that square is a built-in bar scale measuring about one mile. Not exactly one mile, because the surveyors weren't going for perfect accuracy, and in some places the sections aren't even close to square. Still, it's a handy measuring grid. If we zoom in to the south half of section 24, we can see that the southwest corner is marked with a small cross and a point elevation. The small cross means that if you go to that section corner, you'll find an official marker. If you go to the southeast corner of the section, you may not find anything to show that you're there. Sometimes there are fences along the section lines, sometimes not. At the start of the video series, I remarked that this map segment shows an area about two and a half miles east-west by a mile and a half north-south. Now that you know what sections are, it's obvious that I was just counting sections. By adding horizontal scale and slope to your toolbox, you'll extract a lot more information from topo maps than from the contour lines alone. Mm -hmm.